My day job is working on Dream Chaser spacecraft operations. But on the side, I also get to support the Advanced Plant Habitat, which is an ISS experiment that my company also has a role in. So I wanted to give everyone an opportunity to kind of step inside the world of these experiments and peel back the curtain to show what it's like to work on an ISS experiment. Because gravity is so essential in the development and growth of all plants and animals on Earth, you can learn a lot about things by removing that from the situation and studying how things react to the lack of gravity in the microgravity environment. So APH stands for Advanced Plant Habitat, and it is an experiment that allows you to grow plants in space in a super controlled environment. APH has been active on the ISS for several years now, and I get the pleasure of being able to work alongside a lot of the people who designed and built it, as well as the science team on the ground. Just like any good science experiment, there's a control and an actual experiment unit. So the one on the ground acts as the control that we compare the in-space unit to. We can run the same experiment twice where the only change between the two circumstances is the microgravity. And that allows us to really fine tune and look at how the microgravity environment of being in space affects agriculture and the internal processes in these different plants. There's big implications because if anyone has seen The Martian or read it, you know that being able to grow plants in space is very important for being able to survive on another planet. Food is essential to us, and being able to grow it anywhere we go is also essential if we're gonna try and live anywhere else other than Earth and reach out to other planets. APH lets us drill into some of the different processes and functions that are inside plants that we aren't able to see as well in just the terrestrial gravity environment. It has huge implications for being able to better understand how we grow crops now and in the future, whether they be genetic engineered or organic. So there's a lot of emphasis on being able to understand how the different things that we're doing now work in that environment and then how that environment then translates back to surface life. So what exactly is in APH? Well, it has two of basically every subsystem inside of it. It's got redundant systems so that if anything breaks, it can continue operating and complete the experiment and it has all sorts of modular parts where if anything goes down, we always have a replacement on hand. One of the things that I get to participate in as a part of my job is we have a lot of the spare parts on hand. So because there's nearly two of everything on the unit, there's even more of those parts on the ground. And we're able to maintain an inventory of all of them and actually ship them to the space station to help maintain the unit up there while we're troubleshooting things down here. There's several main parts to the unit. Uh, one of the biggest and most notable ones is the growth chamber. The growth chamber provides all the volume for the plants to be able to grow and the experiment to be carried out. Because it's an environmental chamber, you don't necessarily have to grow plants in it. It can be used to just maintain a certain condition, which makes it really, really useful for genetic engineering experiments and all sorts of things that you might need to monitor life science experiments where you need a very tight margin for control of the temperature, humidity, and conditions that you're working with. The growth chamber is surrounded by a few different parts that allow it to maintain those conditions. One of them is an ECS unit, which is an environmental control system. And there's one on each side. And again, like I said, they're redundant. So they're able to supply the temperature control, humidity control, cur air currents inside the unit. And also they support the dispensation of different trace gases and things like CO2 or nitrogen that plants need to survive. Above the unit is the growth light. So it's pretty self-explanatory. It's a light that's able to provide light energy, which all plants need to survive. And it has over 250 colors that it can project onto these plants. 
and really broad spectrum of different wavelengths that it can work with. And that's really, really important because every plant has a different requirement and some plants will actually refuse to bloom depending on the different spectrums that they're receiving. Usually in photos, the growth light appears pink because this pink color is actually what allows most plants to grow the best. There's a lot of functions in the unit, so it has a microcontroller and computer that run all the internal systems, monitor the sensors, and make sure that all of the internal conditions inside the unit are being maintained as they're intended. This part, oddly enough, is called the FARMER, which is an acronym, and don't ask me to abbreviate what it means, but it basically manages everything. And the farmer, much like a real farmer, is able to make sure that all of the temperature, the humidity, the uh, water dispensation, and the light is correct to the plants. Inside the growth chamber, you'll see a black tray, and this tray is called the science carrier. The science carrier carries all the science, basically. So it has all of the experiment for any given science experiment contained within it. It's like a modular tray that we're able to configure for any given experiment and then reuse for the next experiment once we've cleaned it out and tailored it to whatever we're going to be doing. Which I didn't know before, starting on this project, wrapping up sort of the standard plan and a lot of sort of like genomic research with it because it's a plant model organism. So they have the genome completely mapped and know everything about it. So any changes, you know, stressors from microgravity or this and that, it's sort of like, like a mice, like a mouse. Like, that's like a, yeah, it's really visible. Yeah, well, yeah, like a mouse is sort of like, and they know everything about it. So that's why they do so many experiments on it. And it's sort of this, you know, wide depth of on the ground, we practice with the science carrier to understand not only how it's going to be packaged, but how to best perform the experiment on the station. The whole unit's self-contained, so we add a growth media inside of it and seal it up with seeds and everything ready for flight and put on a spacecraft like the Crew Dragon or Dream Chaser to be able to go to the station and deliver it to the astronaut. From there, it's unpacked and installed into the unit and connected via all the lines that it has. Science Carrier has all sorts of microcontrollers inside of it that are able to detect not only the water content in each quadrant, but it can also understand what its internal water volume and uh, status inside it is. So it's able to really give a lot of feedback to the experiment on how the plants are doing, even if you can't see them and they haven't germinated yet. There's also an air scrubber drawer that's able to add carbon dioxide or take carbon dioxide out to maintain the level inside the unit. Because you not only need to add carbon dioxide, but you also have to be able to remove it. And fun fact, on ISS, the carbon dioxide content is much higher because it's an enclosed space. And a lot more often than not, you actually have to pull carbon dioxide out that is being exhaled by the astronauts because some plants will not germinate, again, not produce fruit, or not even survive really uh, at higher CO2 levels. Each of these parts has all sorts of spares that we maintain on the ground, and because our ground unit is the exact same as the flight unit, we're able to validate and test and practice installations and repairs on the ground unit before sending anything to the station. So it's every bit the same but we get to fiddle with it and play with it a little more so that we have a game plan for when things go to ISS. So what is it exactly like to work on one of these ISS experiments? Um, it's very schedule driven. Um, there's a lot of elements that have to kind of line up and all of that happens well before anything launches. So before a launch, we have to perform a ground test of the experiment. So this is a whole experiment validation campaign where we work with the different teams to carry out the experiment and make sure it'll work on the station. The ground experiment is called an EVT or an experiment validation test, and it covers everything that we're gonna do on the space station. And it allows us to kind of practice and learn and make sure that we have everything sorted. The unit is very configurable, so we can support a lot of different experiments, and we have a queue, basically, of experiments that we're intended to perform, and we work with a science team to be able to perform those experiments. My role in all of this 
is to support the science team and NASA in being able to perform these experiments and maintaining the unit. All in all, there's three teams that are working on this at any given time. There is the NASA team that's basically providing the facilities, the direction on what they would like to do with the experiment, and they select different experiments that they see as higher or lower priority. Then there's a science team that actually performs the science section of the experiment. They're usually teamed up with another outside individual like a uh, university, uh, some sort of company, or whatever entity that would like to perform an experiment on the station and has an overall outline for what they'd like to do. And then there's us at Sierra Space, and we are providing the facility to perform it in. And our facility is the APH unit. We maintain and operate the unit while the science team provides all the things that go inside of it. We try to maintain everything to their liking, and they try and communicate back and forth with us what they need and NASA is also alongside that trying to make sure everything runs smoothly. So the science team works through everything they'd like to see and what they're trying to figure out. And then they provide us with that science carrier that I mentioned before. And that tray is then installed into the unit. And we try and keep everything very sterile and clean so that no outside factors affect the experiment. We're also always trying to make it as real as possible. So some experiments, depending on how sensitive they are, actually go in an environmental chamber where we replicate not only the temperature, but the carbon dioxide content of the actual ISS station. So we have several of these chambers at KSC, and we actually move the entire experiment cart into that chamber, and then we're able to replicate that exact condition on ISS. Once APH is moved into like the environmental chamber or ready to begin the experiment, we're actually able to bring in a science team and NASA. Uh, both of those teams come in and work with us to configure the unit and make sure that it has a profile for the experiment that meets the needs. So the principal investigator, whoever's running the experiment uh, and has the whole concept of procedures and operations for the experiment, basically dictates what the light levels are gonna be, the temperature inside, uh, how different things are going to be carried out, and they have the general idea of what they're actually trying to accomplish. The science team is more like their hands at that point, where they're executing the experiment and actually making it happen. Once the science team is ready to perform the experiment, and it's the day of, we open the unit and we configure it to whatever conditions that the principal investigator and the science team want to have for the experiment. Once the science carrier goes into the unit, we're able to maintain the chamber at whatever conditions that the science team want. From that point, for the most part, we're maintaining all the conditions through the farmer uh, on a laptop connection, and we actually monitor it every day and usually have to go in and check and download data from the unit and pass that on to not only our NASA counterparts, but the science team and principal investigator. So once we're maintaining the unit, we're making sure everything's functioning as normal, and we're able to kind of live monitor it to make sure it works. We can also do this with the flight unit, but we have a little less freedom in being able to touch it or work on it just because it's on the space station. From there, the whole experiment runs its course and what happens in this phase is really dependent on whatever that principal investigator wants. Um, there's different stages sometimes where there's a harvest in the middle. For the, uh, the pepper experiment or the radish experiment, there were sections where things needed to be harvested and those different harvests marked different points during the experiment where they would take intermediate uh, analysis or samples from the experiment. Once we perform the final harvest of whatever the experiment is growing, then we remove the science carrier, disconnect everything, rinse all the systems out to make sure it's all clean, and sanitize the inside. At that point, we're ready to perform the next experiment, and we kind of keep in this cycle of performing the ground experiment and then watching as the in-space experiment is performed. And it's really, really cool to be able to see the things that you've practiced and figured out and kind of evolved on the ground be performed on the station. And it's even cooler when you get to see it uh, through the lens of really excited astronauts because they always seem to really enjoy being able to actually grow something on the station. I've just come onto the team relatively recently, so I've only gotten to see a couple experiments, but it's really, really cool being able to go in and see an experiment being performed and then several months later have that same experiment up on station and monitor the progress uh, alongside this science team and uh, see 
what you basically practice come to fruition. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, I had a lot of fun making it. I've been working on this as my day job, so it's really, really cool to be able to share it and talk about it so that other people can kind of get to appreciate the things that are going on uh, on this orbiting laboratory right above us here. I'd really like to make more videos like this because it lets me kind of peel back the curtain and show some of the really cool work that goes on behind the scenes in aerospace and on the International Space Station. For me, it's just a part of my day job, but I also really, really enjoy being able to talk about it to people because it's super interesting and everyone always loves hearing about being able to grow plants because it's just something that we can all really connect with because food and agriculture and greenery is just something that I think we really, really um, resonate with. So if you want more of this type content where it kind of shows a little bit of what's going on at my day job, I would love to make more of that. Um, it's a little more uh, drawn out and harder to make, so it takes a long time to deliver, but I've been really excited to make this video for a while, and it's been a lot of collecting content and videos of what's going on and what it's like to work on the experiment. So if you like this type content, uh, consider subscribing and let me know what you think in the comments.